Well, hey everybody, welcome to All Dimensional Talks. My name is Amir Tracy, your host. I'm here with Rain Grant, the lovely legend from Colorado. Uh, she's a reverend mother, doctor of mycological sciences. Uh, she offers consulting, counseling, healing. She is the owner of the Colorado Mushroom Company, LLC, and spiritual practitioner at Rain Grant Taro, the media producer at Rain, Rain Grant Productions, founder of the Four Corners Mycological Society. She's a musician, a DJ, the list goes on and on. She's a phenomenon, okay, guys? <laughs> and uh, we're going to dive deep into this conversation and kind of see what's going on. She's um, with uh, Rain and the Nocturnal Bees, and she's the Rain in the Bees, you know what I mean? So the president of the Psychedelic Club of Durango, and enthe she's the entheogenic leading edge. Thank you. That was quite the mouthful. And <laughs> there's going to be more because every day we are creating more and more titles, more and more uh, of our personality gets manifested, right? So... Thank you guys for being here, and uh, I guess we're going to start the show. <laughs> okay, Rain. Wow. Good to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for quite the lovely intro. Yeah. My goodness, I'm like, that's like a tongue twister I know, there. right? Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> so, um, I, I really want to talk about uh, this breakthrough thing you're doing with the Durango uh, Mushroom Company. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just maybe tell us a little bit about this, that, you, you know, wh where you began, what, what inspired mm, you. Mm. What, where did I begin? Yeah. Let's see. So the, Co the Colorado Mushroom Company, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's family run. I, I started that in 2018, but mm. that's not where it started, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, that's when I started making tinctures and, 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 and put up my shop and whatnot and started providing elixirs and tinctures mm. and whatnot for the community mm. just locally, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it started off as. Mm. But it started probably with my um, fascination with mushrooms, quite mm. frankly. Um, mm. Back in 2012, mm. I... Uh, I had all this film equipment. I'm a filmmaker, mm -hmm. and um, I, I was like, I need to make. I know I need to make a documentary. I don't know what I said. Universe, show me <laughs> what I'm supposed to be focusing on. Mm -hmm. And that's when I came across um, Paul Stamets. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a TED talk uh, titled Six Ways That Mushrooms Can Help Save the World." Right. And so I watched this um, this talk. It's about 18 minutes long. And I was like, what, 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 what? You know, like, yeah. wait a minute. And I started researching mushrooms like crazy. Mm. And um, I was like, whoa, there's way more than six ways mushrooms can help our planet. Mm. And um, I mean, I just kind of dove in. And then what I did is I, I see I was living in Shreveport, Louisiana at the mm. time. My husband at the time was in the film industry. So we were down there mm. and uh, I, I started finding mushrooms everywhere. As soon as I noticed, like thought about mushrooms, they were, they were everywhere, mm. right? And I'm like, so I started reaching out to all of the experts in their field, different mycologists around the world. You know, the mm. internet is such a great uh, tool for connecting with people. And um, <clears throat> I used to live in Telluride, Colorado, oh, amazing. where uh, we have the Telluride Mushroom Festival every year. It's mm. one of the large, or it is the largest international mm. mushroom festival. Mm. And I already had connections with Art Good Times, the mm. Shroom Pa. He mm. calls it, I think it goes by the Shroom Pa. <laughs> Like a grandpa, of like shrooms. a grandpa, yeah, like a grandpa, yeah, shroom pop, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> he was like the county commissioner there, and he yeah. was like one of the first people I met in Telluride. Mm. And I had um, experienced the mushroom festival just watching the the parade, which is mm. kind of goofy. Everybody dresses like mushrooms and parades oh, down fun. the street. So I thought that <laughs> the mushroom festival was just that, but it's actually an educational event. Oh. So I was like, okay, I need to go to Telluride and connect with all as many of the speakers as I possibly can and catch as many interviews oh. as possible, right? Mm. And so that's what I did. And I started reaching out to people and I got a really good response. Um, the, the title of my documentary is uh, <clears throat> Can Mushrooms Save the Planet? It's a question. Can mushrooms mm -hmm. save the planet? And what does that even mean? You know, mm -hmm. what is saving the planet? Mm -hmm. So that's where I started diving into, barely touching, because I really didn't have mm -hmm. any um, experience mm -hmm. with fungi. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I went up to Telluride. I, I got some really phenomenal footage. Mm -hmm. And then I've, con you know, mm -hmm. subsequent years have gone by, and I've continued to mm -hmm. get... Uh, personal interviews, gone to farms, I've traveled mm. around uh, recording seminars and talks, mm. and through through uh, through just that, and then like just researching, I have so many books now on mm. mycology and uh, on different mushrooms, and just, mm. you know, foraging, from foraging to cookbooks to um, <clears throat> clinical trials and mm. just all sorts of ones, you know, and uh, as many as I could get my hands on. That's and so nice. I've been uh, reading and reading and reading mm. and uh, talking to people, mm -hmm. and so then, I started putting on talks mm. at various events, mm -hmm. uh, 
like the Sonic Bloom Festival and, mm -hmm. and, and such, and, uh, and different permaculture events and things like yeah. that. And I didn't really have any product, like I didn't have a product line or anything, but I would make like cordyceps chocolates and I'd bring Ooh. them and pass them out to the people that would be there at, nice. at the event or make tea, you know. Mm. And um, just the more that I've been involved in it, the more I've been learning. Yeah. Because that's just kind of, you know, how it works. You know, mm -hmm. you just if you're in the environment you just soak it in mm -hmm. and <clears throat> I've just become really passionate about the topic mm -hmm. so I started creating the products for my children first mm -hmm. of all I started making it making things for my family mm -hmm. for myself yeah um, so I have, a, I have a question so um, when you, you titled your documentary can mushrooms save the world or save the planet so it looks like you're focusing on the ingesting of the mushrooms because there's a lot of different things that mushrooms do from like renewable energy. I've seen like a lot of different stuff like composting and, you know, com completely kind of terraforming the world. So it seems like are, are you focused like in saving the world? Is it like saving people or is it saving like, you know, is there a certain aspect that you're focus focusing on? With the mushrooms? So that's a really yeah. great question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are many, many, like you said, many ways mm -hmm. that you can utilize fungi mm -hmm. to help. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, my main focus was on remediation. Mm. What people are doing to create healthy soil in desertous mm. environments. How are people Ooh. reversing desertification? Yeah. Um, how is it that, and then you look at like things like oil spills mm. and, uh, and, and toxic, you know, uh, heavy, heavy, heavy metals like mm. lead in the soil. Mm. People use some of these mushrooms to, to, to face some of these, uh, I call them epidemics. Yeah. And um, when I do my talk, I, I, call, I, I say, we're gonna look at many of the epidemics that our planet's facing and what people around the world wow. are doing with mushrooms to kind of face these issues. Mm -hmm. I hate to say fight these issues or something like that. I'm like, Let's, yeah. what are we doing to resolve mm -hmm. the problems? Right. And I'm not saying that mushrooms are the only thing that's helping. There's so many things that we can do to help our planet, but how do mushrooms play a role? And the mm -hmm. first, the first and foremost, mo first and foremost way that they help is in mm. the soil. They mm. actually create soil. Mm. Without fungi, we would not have soil. Mm. We would not have plants. Mm. We would not be here today. Mm. So as far as I can tell, they terraform these rocky planets. I don't know what they do on the gas, gas planets because we yeah. don't really know that much about right. that if they even, mm -hmm. are, if there are any there. But yeah. but I, um, <clears throat> I'm a believer that they, they terraform rocky planets throughout our um, universes and whatnot. Wow. But, um, definitely. There's definitely a lot of studies that you know show that the maybe even psilocybin mushrooms or these other mushrooms come from different planets or they're kind of just so foreign like where is this thing coming from in the circle of life on earth you know yeah and yeah. i'm sure you have some good thoughts on that yeah yeah that's actually an interesting uh yeah. concept with the spores entering through the atmosphere or through meteors meteorites mm -hmm. um there's a you know there's so many theories surrounding yeah. that nobody's got concrete mm -hmm. but we know that we're constantly finding new mushroom species on right, the planet right. and there are millions yeah we've only like uh named off off maybe even like only a hundred thousand at this point mm. out of millions so wow. there we don't we're just kind of barely learning mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah there's definitely a mushroom growing in the in the bathroom here no i'm just kidding <laughs> like <laughs> you, no one knows what that is you know <laughs> i want to see it yeah i know right <laughs> no i'm just kidding I'm just <laughs> oh my god i want to see <laughs> but, um, but uh, yeah so uh <laughs> there's this book uh <laughs> I mean, for real, I want I to see it. <laughs> um, there's a book titled uh, Fungal Biology in the Emergence of Life by mm -hmm. David Moore. If you're yeah. interested in the roles that mushrooms or fungi played in the mm -hmm. creation of our planet, I highly suggest that book. There's a website on it as well. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I've done some write a little bit of write-ups on it. But it um, basically talks about how fu fungi, like the only thing that could survive the harshness of our planet mm -hmm. uh, at one point was, was bacteria. Mm -hmm. And um, bacteria, you know, bacteria were just everything else like that could survive was in the ocean, right? Mm. But it was a very hard. There was no real atmosphere or anything like that. Mm. And so uh, fungi created bonds with cyan bacteria. Cyan bacteria is a type of bacteria that mm. um, uses photosynthesis like a plant. Wow, okay, it's it's super cool. Mm. And they formed bonds and were able to survive and start breaking down rock and mm -hmm. turning it into soil mm -hmm. and also started to digest some of the dead bacteria, mm -hmm. turning it into soil. And eventually other things started to be able to survive outside yeah. of the, you know, and there's, <clears throat> so that's basically the, uh, the premise surrounding mm -hmm. the fungal biology. Mm and the emergence of life. But, uh, and, and, I, and it seems to make logical sense because it is a theory, yeah. you know, but I, um, 
it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, look at lichen, lichen today. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it, it's three, it's like three different, well, each, each lichen is, there's thousands of lichen, but each lichen's mm -hmm. a little bit different, mm -hmm. but it has fungi, algae, and bacteria, cyan yeah. bacteria. So mm -hmm. you've got plant, fungi, and bacteria that have mm -hmm. formed bonds to create mm -hmm a new organism and I think that's something that we could all learn from mm -hmm. on the planet is being able to mm -hmm. to work together to create something mm -hmm. greater than ourselves you know absolutely it's so holistic using all the animal kingdoms to support life all that's the amazing kingdoms. yes yes yeah so um awesome so in in your discovery and, and research and in the different you know benefits and effects of mushrooms what do you think you know is maybe like a significant uh you know study that you found or maybe that you've even done yourself like have you tried them like a mushroom that has you know significantly impacted your day or something mm, like that? Yeah, lots of lots yeah. of good mushrooms <laughs> that, for sure that, <clears throat> mm -hmm. so um you know as human beings mm. we have been we have the power to create and mm. we have the power to destroy mm. and i feel that if we are healthy being if we're able to think straight and we're mm. and, and we're in our best selves that we're able to make better choices in life mm. and um and if you look at say i'm trying to think of the name of the book <clears throat> mm. dr rick strassman talks about dmt and the importance of mm. dmt in our brain and how mm. it, it causes our behavioral differences and our mm. and our dmt levels have plummeted drastically over the last two hundred thousand years because we're not we're no longer hunter gatherers so mm. um what happens when you don't have significant or the correct amounts of DMT in the brain mm -hmm. is that you were more prone to fight and argue and be uh, anxious. You know, fight or flight mm -hmm. mode is mm -hmm. more more mm -hmm. uh, prevalent. You know, uh, mm -hmm. they and they what is it called? Grain brain. Some people call it because we didn't eat a lot of grains at one point. Oh, it was mainly right. fruits yeah. and veggies mm -hmm. and, and maybe meats, but mm -hmm. um, but it w but we, it was hunter gatherer right. style. Mm -hmm. style. So today like fast forward to today where everything is heavy on the cereals and grains Interesting. and uh yeah. we and, and 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 there's a lot of stressors in the world and we're mm. all you know i don't you know so some of these mushrooms uh are correlated with the pineal gland that's where dmt mm. is produced our body mm. naturally produces dmt mm. um uh, and i'm not answering your question directly oh, i'm kind of leading yeah, up to going. it yeah. but yeah. <laughs> but um but, yeah. but some of these and i and there have not been enough studies on fungi and yeah. so uh i intuit a lot of things and then mm -hmm. i'll find studies that back up my intuition you know right, right. but uh but there are certain fun some certain mushrooms that mm. are supportive to the pineal gland and yeah. also supportive to dmt mm -hmm. production um and that's what I think is really, really key. Now, when we start talking about nutrition, not just yeah. the DMT in our brain, we start mm. talking about nutrition. Mm. Fungi are really high in vitamins and minerals mm. and, and all of the things that you can find in, in fruits and vegetables and meat. You know, right. it's like, protein. Like B12s, right? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and uh, B6 and all that, right? I think that, yeah, it's yeah. got different B vitamins yeah. in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, mm -hmm. yeah. But cool. um, but specific mushrooms that you know each mushroom is so dynamically different. They mm. all have similarities in that, like mm. the food ones and the medicinal ones, mm. is that they support our immune system. Yeah. They support a healthy gut gut balance, gut flora, right. you know, and and that's where our immune system starts is in mm. our gut. So you know, I think it's really important. And and a lot of people, specifically in the United States, have what's called fungophobia, the fear, sure. yeah. a fear of mushrooms, and. Mm. Um, I'm not, <laughs> but but if you look at uh, like areas like Germany and, and places like that where they it's just kind yeah. of part of their culture to go mm. forage mm. and bring back the food. Um, right. In fact, uh, King Bolit mushroom. Uh, mm. I just found out recently that Einstein ate mushroom meals three times a day, wow. and his favorite mushroom was the King Bolit or the Boletus edulis. Wow. And uh, Very yeah, cool. so That's I'm like, eat your mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah, having like a healthy relationship with like foraging and hunting them like. You know, I'm from Minnesota, and we'd go look for the morel mushrooms, and uh -huh. that was what broke the stigma for me. Like, wow, these are delicious. These morels are like totally gourmet, super like nutritious, and they you know give you strength and I awesome. Just you know? read, just read recently that morels are one of the most nutrient dense mushrooms out of all of them. But they're wow. kind of they can be kind of elusive, especially in Colorado. They're very they're not oh, that they're, easy to find. Oh, interesting. Okay, uh -huh. yeah, but they're and, and you and it's hard to cultivate them. The Chinese mm. have dialed it in, like oh. cultivating mm. morels. But mm. um, but uh, yeah, cool. that's one of those ones that it's. it's 
usually going to find it wild. Mm-hmm. And another one I really love is the lion's mane, too, mm. just for the neuro- neurological effects of it. I mean, I find myself when I take, like, two of those little, little capsules with the lion's mane, I mean, I can focus for two hours, three hours, and mm. not be phased and not be distracted. Mm-hmm. So there definitely is, like, something to be said about these mushrooms and like there's a significant difference happening when you eat them and this how it affects your mind your cognition your clarity just you know and your ability you... to focus for long periods yeah. of time yep mm-hmm. you know a lot of them have uh, sugars in them that feed mm-hmm. our brain it's exactly what we need for energy in our mm-hmm. brain mm-hmm. and uh, I, uh yeah lion's mane mushroom uh always make sure you're getting a full spectrum full spectrum okay full spectrum yeah. means the fruiting body mm-hmm. as well as the mycelium there are different mm-hmm. enzymes that are produced in those um, I'm, some people are not a fan of the full spectrum. They're like, oh, if you're eating the mycelium, it's like filler, you know, because mm-hmm. they grow, they have to grow it on something. So you're right. getting a little bit of whatever uh, substrate mm-hmm. you're growing it on. Mm-hmm. But I'm a proponent for saying full spectrum. If you're taking it as like a medicine, full yeah. spectrum, if you're taking, if uh, lion's mane is a delicious food, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, very traditional. You can find it all over the planet. Different, uh, her, yeah, different, different it look, types too. It looks really pretty too. Yeah, super. Yeah, it's, it's a tooth yeah. mushroom, so it doesn't uh-huh. have gills. It's uh-huh. super it's, beautiful, yeah, right? It is, yeah. But uh, but it yeah. helps with neurogenesis, yeah. which means it's growth of new nervous tissue in the mm-hmm. body, and that's super important because when we age, mm-hmm. all of us are going to have degeneration of, of our nervous mm-hmm. system right. and it can not only just affect the brain because people mm-hmm. think about the brain but it's the whole body right. our entire mm-hmm. to the fingertips to the toes you know yeah. mm-hmm. and um you know uh it's like paul stamets talks about his stamets stacks where he's mm-hmm. st- a stack is when you add different t- types of whatever it is he mm-hmm. said he says lion's mane psilocybin mushrooms and he talks about taking niacin which is a oh, yeah. you know nicotinic acid yeah. and that causes the flush it's a b vitamin mm. and he says and i and i did some research on nicotinic acid and it itself causes neurogenesis and yeah. uh and, and the flushing i guess what what stamet says is that when you're taking that in conjunction with the lion's mane mm-hmm. and the psilocybin mm-hmm. based mushroom uh, mm-hmm. it's going to it's, mm-hmm. It brings the medicine to the nerve endings quicker. That's his thing, awesome. um, and yeah. that makes sense. I've mm-hmm. you know, I play around with it a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm I am a proponent for using cayenne pepper in some of these because sure. that brings things to your bloodstream faster. Yeah. Okay. Great. Awesome. So let's talk about a little bit a little bit about the uh, Durango Mushroom Company. Yeah, so, the Colorado Mushroom yeah, Company. Yeah, oh, sorry, Colorado Mushroom Company. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. So um, yeah. in 2018, I went ahead and labeled, like, decided that was the name I was going with. Yeah. It incorporates the entire state. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I wanted to create a scenario in which I could hire my teenagers. Oh, you nice. know? Yeah. So I'm like, I want to bring them in on the fold. I want to mm-hmm. be able to. So. It's really small right now. Mm-hmm. I've been blessed in that my sister just moved to the area, and we're right. joining forces. She's mm-hmm. partnering up uh, with the company, and it's really important because she looks at all the nitty gritty details that mm-hmm. I might miss over in in, in the in the moment of yeah. creating mm-hmm. something. But um, mm-hmm. but no, this is a family run business, and uh, so far, yeah, so far it's just family. But I'm mm-hmm. looking at like as mm-hmm. we expand, as we grow, mm-hmm. creating a scenario in which I can bring in interns which i can mm-hmm. offer jobs to people right. and maybe even bring my mother into the fold like, yeah, I'll right. mom in there somewhere yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. but we're awesome. looking at um so right now we do have a website mm-hmm. um the colorado mushroom company mm-hmm. dot love <laughs> you nice. gotta get that dot love mm-hmm. um and i have an etsy page we also have a facebook and an instagram cool nice. but um but mainly i was uh, doing tinctures you know uh, alcohol it's a dual extract so it's alcohol mm-hmm. and a water extract mm-hmm. um, and I was I've been working on um, these elixirs where mm-hmm. it's honey I use honey as the base to extract because when you work with raw honey mm-hmm. it has living enzymes mm-hmm. and it has living organisms in there that do all sorts of things depending on the mushroom that you're working with Cool. And um, so that that's a cool thing. But now we've been expanding to have different types of products. Mm. Um, our laboratory is almost complete. We're going to be growing. Fr- I've, see, I've been sourcing out all mm. my mushrooms, either wild harvesting mm-hmm. or from uh, various farms mm-hmm. in the North California and Oregon areas, okay, to, okay, for my mushroom medicines or for right. my mushroom 
mm-hmm. they're mushrooms. Um, and so I'm like, we need to be growing food. We need to be supplying the farmers market, sure. uh, locals mm-hmm. markets. You know, I have my my teenagers go do home deliveries. I'm like, I'm gonna oh, get nice. those kids doing all awesome. kinds of do things. Do they go foraging too? Or... <laughs> they totally oh, yeah. do. Nice. Kids are. I don't know if it's because they're the little ones. I don't know mm-hmm. if it's because they're like shorter to the ground, but yeah. they like they see everything. <laughs> yeah, that's great. But I don't know. I get my sister out there, and I'm like, and telling her what to look for, and she's mm-hmm. like, oh, there's one, and there's one. I'm like. You you guys are way better than nice. me at this, you know. <laughs> and what what kind of mushrooms are you guys finding out there? Um, up in the yeah. mountains. So I'm yeah. I'm mostly familiar with our Rocky Mountains, you know. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I moved back to uh, the Rocky Mountains in 2013, mm-hmm. and I've been foraging since that time. Mm-hmm. So I'm mostly familiar with our species, and it seems like a lot of our varieties here are specialized and are specific to our wow. location. Mm. For instance, our um, our cantharellus canthara- variety, our mm-hmm. um, chanterelles, are, yeah. are specific to the Rocky Mountains. Our uh, boletus, we have boletus uh, ruberceps, which mm. grows in the Rocky Mountains only. And, and our it... Amanita muscaria varieties mm. are specific to our region as well. Wow. Is the Belita, the king boletus, is that different than the boletus? Is there like a distinction between those so two? So boletus is a, is a type of mushroom, yeah. right? It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's a polypore, so it's kind of yeah. spongy under uh, underneath it. Yeah. But there are many, many different types. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Most people, uh, when they think of a porcini mm. or a king bolete, that's the same thing, just different names. Gotcha. Um, they think of the boletus edulis, and that grows all over the world. Like, go to Italy. The Italians love this stuff. Oh, you know, okay. you yeah, eat it. And it's, yeah. it's really delicious. Mm. Big fat mushrooms and like <laughs> you find them and you go oh god no, no. Right, like <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but um yeah. but no our, our local variety here is mm-hmm. uh specific it looks a little more rosy on the top mm-hmm. and um they're really beautiful cool and mm-hmm. uh they're mycorrhizal so you'll find them growing with specific trees like our spruce trees and it's just oh, so cool. beautiful to be in nature and yeah. be looking especially with the kids mm-hmm. or whom, whomever you know mm-hmm. and i've led some forays and whatnot and cool but uh, yeah, yeah. That's great. Um, so there are a lot of food mushrooms, and it's mm. really, really important, I feel, to know what grows indigenously in your area. It's empowering to know what wild foods there are, mm. not to be so dependent on our markets. And yeah. Uh, mm. it's, yeah, it's empowering to the individual. And it's just so, when you talk to kids, they get excited yeah. about mm. mushrooms. And um, I love that. And, mm. and then and then there are a lot of uh, varieties in the mush in the mountains mm. that uh, are strictly medicinal. Yeah. You wouldn't really, really want to eat them. The conch mushrooms, they're kind of woody. Uh, even they're fresh. If you try to bite it, it's like arr, arr. it's like <laughs> spongy. You know, I, yeah. I, I do. I like yeah. chewing on them. Arr, arr. Yeah. <laughs> Get a little baby one and walk around yeah. chewing on right. it. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah. But they're beautiful and they're I mean incredible. Mm. It's incredible what the studies are showing with some of these mushrooms, yeah. and uh, that's what's really exciting to me is is the benefits that it, it really mm. provides. You know, with their anti-inflammatory, uh, the support of the immune system. I mean, they're antiviral, right. antibacterial, but not just that. There's I mean, there's just a load that's awesome. of things that they can do for us. Now, can the so do you focus on like the medicinal mushrooms with your company or are you focusing like on just like nutrition and like, you know, supplying calories to people that just want to eat mushrooms for three meals a day, like Einstein or, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> like, cur- currently, yeah. um, I've been providing mainly, um, medicinals mm. and also education. Oh, okay. okay? Mm. And we're moving more into the food related stuff. Yeah. We've mm-hmm. created a spice, a, a line of spices. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can cook with oh. your Italian umami, Mm. Yeah, seasoning or your Cajun style. I think we mm. have nine. Is it nine different mm. flavors right now? So we haven't even released them on the market. I'm right now working on the promotional material. Mm. Um, that's, that, yeah, that's exciting. That's um, but the laboratory is almost complete, and that is going to provide food. Awesome. mainly yeah. and i want that i mean anybody that i've talked to like in our local area gets super excited let me know when, when you know how can i get it and i'm like yeah. you know what i want to be mm-hmm. able to deliver it to their door mm-hmm. i want it at the markets i want the you know to perhaps provide it to the chefs in the area and things like that but yeah, but the definitely. food's a big deal mm-hmm. uh, the nutrition behind that feeding mm-hmm. people that is a really big deal mm-hmm. and um and then teaching people how to do it for themselves that's so empowering mm-hmm. that anybody can grow mm-hmm. their own food. Absolutely. You know, you just, yeah. I mean, you, know, you can grow it in your closet, you can yeah. grow it under your bed, wherever you want. And it, likes to, grow, it likes to grow pretty fast too, doesn't they it? They can and, grow yeah. really fast, like, especially yeah. things like oyster mushrooms. Some yeah. of them are a little slower growing, yeah. like uh-huh. your shiitake, right. things like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, but some of them grow really fast. Absolutely. And, and that's, mm-hmm. uh, I have a, a friend, Trad yeah. Cotter, shout out Trad. Yeah. 
he and uh, and a group of people went down to, to uh, Haiti, mm. and they were teach, trying to teach the locals to grow their own food. But a lot of the adults are really scared of mushrooms; like they won't even touch them. And he's like, right. "Here, you know, here you are with a food deficit, and yeah. yet you won't eat the food." And he was so fed up; wow. he was just like, "I'm out of here." I'm, I'm, I'm gone. Uh, and he like, he gets all his stuff together and he's like leaving this building and all the kids surround him. Where are you going? Where are you going? And so he sat down and started explaining to them how to grow mushrooms, grow to mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And it was the kids that wanted to learn. He was mm -hmm. showing them how to do it in um, mm -hmm. using cardboard. You mm -hmm. can layer it on, car like put your myceliated, myceliated mm -hmm. substrate on cardboard and roll it up. Right. And it will eat the cardboard because yeah. it's a wood, you know, it has lignin in it. Mm -hmm. You can put it in a mason jar with the proper moisture. And just, mm -hmm. I think that's really killer Absolutely. that there are people like that doing that. That gives right. me some hope. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it would be really great to be in that position to just mm -hmm. teach um, locals, whether they are adults or right. or the kids. And, the, and I think the big thing is like people have a connotation that, you know, mushrooms going to be poisonous or maybe it's going to make you, you know, see something or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know... If you know the poisonous varieties on your continent, uh -huh. you, most of the time you're going to know to stay away from them. It's pretty distinct, and there's not a lot to worry about. A lot of the mushrooms are very much edible, but this is not health advice. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, in general, like, if somebody's going to just you know, hear this and, like, think they can, you know, but... Absolutely, you know, yeah. absolutely. And that is a, that is a disclaimer, okay? Yeah, yeah. Like, definitely don't go yeah. and just start eating yeah. random mm -hmm. mushrooms because mm -hmm. it could make you really sick. Mm -hmm. Most mushrooms are not going to kill you, even yeah. if they're not edible. Yeah. They might make you feel nauseated, mm -hmm. vomit, have mm -hmm. diarrhea. These things, you know? Yeah. You don't like these things. Right. But, um, mm -hmm. but um, it, I think that it's incredibly important to mm -hmm. know how to identify the edibles. Yeah. And I think that if there is a look, because some of these mushrooms that are edible might have a poisonous mm -hmm. or toxic look-alike. So familiarize yourself with the edible and the toxic mm -hmm. version of it or look-alike. Right. And yeah. that is, is going to put you in a much stronger position. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, we have a lot of these mycological societies all over the place that yep. you can join locally. So, mm -hmm. you know, check, you can go to uh, my my page is, I have the Can Mushroom Save the Planet mm -hmm. Facebook page, mm -hmm. or uh, you can contact me over at the Four Corners Mycological Society mm -hmm. um, and reach out to me. I, um, I like to connect pe people with their local mm. groups. Uh, my group is always my groups are always open to anyone from anywhere cool. on the planet. But uh, right. but it's good to, to you know there are identify there are groups on Facebook strictly for identification purposes. Nice. And always if you're going to take a picture, mm -hmm. make sure you take a picture of the uh, mushroom when it's you know where it's growing. Look around. What tree mm -hmm. is it growing next to? What plants are growing? Where is it located? And then take a spore print because the coloration of the spores are going to tell you know tell you. Mm -hmm. Or give you a, you can't always figure these things out because there's always mushrooms. You're like, what is that? Yeah, it might be new, right? Uh huh, yeah, uh huh. Exactly. Yeah. But I mean, for me, when I go foraging, I'm I have a a, a few handfuls of edible mushrooms that mm -hmm. I know what they are and how to identify them. So that's mm -hmm. really great when we have a lot of moisture and yeah. they can actually grow. On my, but um. But no, yeah. yeah. And I know there's some apps on the phone too. You can take a photo of a leaf and it'll tell you what kind of tree it is, right? So the technology is just getting really crazy. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. I haven't done it with a wild mushroom, but I'm there sure. is an there's, app. There is an app. I just downloaded yeah. it and then I realized they wanted to charge me money for it. And I was like, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe at, you know, in the summer when our season here in Colorado is actually, mm -hmm. uh, you know, banging cool. you know booming uh, i'll uh, try it out mm -hmm. you know because I, I do i want to try out that mm -hmm. app but there is one awesome. that, that made me really excited and i was great. like really you can take it but i don't know we'll see how it works if it's good awesome. or not so yeah great awesome and this uh dirty chai here with uh, mushrooms in it is excellent and i just want to do a shout out so this do you have a name for it or is it just like so that particular one is a dirty chai we okay. call it the dirty tribe chai because it has mm -hmm. a tribe of mushrooms it's got 14 different oh medicinal gosh. mushrooms in it mm. and then it's a lovely chai and coffee blend um so good. it's yeah. very earthy and grounding you know i really like it it's really, oh, good, really deal. Delicious. good deal good <laughs> yeah. deal yeah we've got the chais and mm. then we have the coffees we're working on a non-caffeinated version mm. and we're actually going to be um tomorrow going over to a local roastery and checking them out we want to cool. work with not just the instant coffees but some really good mm -hmm. local fair trade great. coffees that people can steep and you know Mm. You know, steep a little mushroom coffee. Get, nice, great. Get the medicine, you know, mm. get the medicine however you, you know. Because it doesn't mm. taste like 
Because people get, get turned off by the whole, like, mushroom idea. Like, ew, mushroom coffee? Gross. You know? Like, you think about, like, a portobello or something. Yeah. Like, that wouldn't taste good in a right, coffee. Right, right. But every mushroom tastes different. It's true. And not all of them taste like portobello. And mm-hmm. um, it's kind of interesting. So when people tell me, I don't like mushrooms, I'm like, which mushrooms? Yeah. yeah have you tried are, this one? They, like, yeah, <laughs> like, like, a morel is, like, infinitely different than a portobello. Totally And different. since you said the magic word, the portobello... What is going on with that mushroom? <laughs> what is the whole drama behind it? There I, is, right? I, every time I cook it or make it, I'm like, I better cook this thing right because Paul Stamets said that. <laughs> Paul Stamets said he can't talk about it. He's like, can't talk die. about it. So no, I, know. I know. So I'm like, um, should I still be buying this from the grocery store? Is okay. this an edible <laughs> mushroom? Okay. Is this a non edible? So, <laughs> I know. So I went like, there. I know. It's interesting. <laughs> this is actually a topic yeah. that several people have reached out and asked yeah. me about because after the Joe Rogan podcast with yeah. Stamets mm-hmm. and Stamets is like, I'm not saying anything. And <laughs> yeah. it's like, you know, blank stare. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and so I, you know, I, I haven't actually talked yeah. to Paul about it. I, yeah. you know, but I have talked to, I, I went ahead and I did as much research that I could online mm-hmm. that there was available. Mm-hmm. And then I met up with um, a gentleman by the name of uh, John Holiday. Mm. He used to be the owner of Aloha Medicinals, a really large mm. uh, producer of mushrooms and medicinal mushrooms. And I was like, hey, what's the deal? Like, mm. And everybody's got a different <laughs> little take on it. Yeah. And I have my own take on it right. without ha- actually looking at it under a microscope or anything. Like, right. I'm not a geneticist, so <laughs> I'm just not. That's not mm. what I do. But mm. some people are mm. and have come up with – well, so the deal with the, agaric, the agaricus bisporus. Mm. So when you go into a grocery store and you see portobello – white button mushrooms, and cremini. They're mm. all agaricus spisporus. Mm. The only difference between the white and the dark is just a slight genetic difference, okay? Mm. Now, portobello is a cremini that's mm. been allowed to grow into its, like, adult state, okay? So they're the same mushroom, right. just in different states. Now, all of these contain a certain, I think it's called, I'm trying to see, I don't want to be misquoted here. It's either, like, an agaritine or agaricines or something like that, but it's a mm-hmm. top, it's, it's mutagenic to our cells, okay? Mm, mm. So what I was able to dig up is that there are constituents in that particular type of mushrooms that can be mutagenic to our cells, mm-hmm. okay? And apparently Paul was talking about it a lot, and someone has threatened him. I don't understand. I can oh. only, I don't know the background of that. Right. I'm not afraid to talk about it. I don't mm-hmm. have anybody knocking down my door trying to kill me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what John Holiday explained to me is that even within the same flush of mushrooms, like because he was growing them too, mm. he said one mushroom might have some of those constituents and the next one might have nothing. Mm-hmm. Interesting, right? Huh, right. I don't know why. Interesting. Mm-hmm. But my understanding is that heat destroys these things. Right. If you boil them for up to, like, what is it, an, a, boiling it for a, a, an hour? or No, 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 I'm sorry. It was like three hours of boiling oh. the mushroom and then getting rid of the water and then mm-hmm. cooking it destroys 90% of the mutagenic properties. Mm. Now, who wants to boil a mushroom for three hours? That's a long time. I mean, Mm -hmm. I do boil the chaga mushroom to extract it for three hours. That's different. But we're not trying to remove anything. Now, you know, and if you fry it for like, uh, saute it for like, I think like five minutes, it it, it only destroys like 10% of it. Something like that. But there are all these benefits to that mushroom as well. It is high in protein, very high in protein, okay, and all of these amino acids and things Mm -hmm. like that. So it's actually beneficial, Mm -hmm. and there have been studies on, uh, you know, agaricus bisporus that have shown that uh, it's it's been not all, okay, so on one hand, you've got the mutagenic properties, but on Mm -hmm. the other hand, you've got these anti-mutagenic properties, right? So it's Mm. been shown to help with women with uh, like breast cancer and things like that. So it's not an all bad mushroom. My question is that if we have all of these other mushrooms that are not toxic, Mm -hmm. not mutagenic, and are highly beneficial, why aren't we selling those? Like, uh, you know, why is it that we only see the, you know, the cremini and the white button and the portobello? Mm -hmm. Why is that? Um, It's you know, money, it's yeah. whatever it is. I don't understand mm-hmm. all of that, but I do mm-hmm. know that we need to be, we ha- we need more alternatives. Mm-hmm. Why not have mushrooms as the main, uh, you know, shiitake. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's nothing wrong with, sh- mm-hmm. shiitake's not going to be mutagenic to yourself, so why mm-hmm. is it? And there's that con- controversy. Mm-hmm. Why, why, that's where the controversy is. is mm-hmm. the, why is that the main mushroom that's being sold, sold. If, it, if it's oh, mutagenic see. to our cells? 
So just be aware of that. Yeah. Um, one thing I do, because I still eat them, I don't eat them regularly, but I yeah. do enjoy yeah. portobello, mm-hmm. is that I will, um, in my pan, boil it a little bit, and then I, <laughs> I pour off that water, mm. um, and then I saute it from there. Um, but that's the, each mushroom you'd prepare in a different way anyway, because right. they're each different textures and things Definitely. like that. But I, yeah. I do keep that in mind with those particular varieties. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> So thank you. That was well put. Well said. <laughs> well said. Cool. Yeah. So awesome, man. Well, I, I do. I love them too. I love the, I, I love the portobello mushrooms. I love to cook them. I love to put them with vegetables. It tastes good with like every dish. Basically. Right. So I'm really getting into the maitake mushrooms maitake. and the mm. king trumpet mushroom. It's mm. a type of, um, it's a type of oyster mushroom, but it grows really big. And when you slice it up, it has this texture of almost like uh, scallops or something mm. is really good nice. or the maitake which is mm. the women's mushroom and is really good for balancing women's hormones mm-hmm. and things like that mm-hmm. and is very delicious in food so why not eat things that are going to be beneficial to right. our health Absolutely. and so right now i'm working on putting pages on my website that are providing information about each of these mushrooms mm-hmm. and and creating vi- videos uh video content mm-hmm. educational content just so people are empowered with the information they can you know people when when you ha- when a person is empowered with information they can make better choices you know absolutely for yeah. themselves or for, for everyone you know? yeah oh uh, awesome thank you yeah so um do you have a, a particular variety of, of mushrooms that um that you're 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 providing with the spice that uh Maybe it's going to be like a hit seller or be like number one on uh, everybody's like ordering list. Um, as far as the spices are yeah. concerned, we're really mainly working with only two varieties that okay. have a very strong umami flavor. Mm. Are you familiar with the term umami? Umami. Um, umami. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way I've heard it. So. <laughs> so, oh, we're working with three mushrooms? Oh, you're right, girlfriend. That's you're three. right, because we have the truffle. So, yeah, we have mm. truffles in one of ours. But Ooh. basically, okay, so what you, umami is, is a fla- so we have like sweet we have savory, we have salty, mm-hmm. you know, we have spicy, we have umami. And umami is what MSG, like MSG is, is derived from like a, a seaweed, right? right? It adds that umami flavor mm. that everybody, that's MSG, MSG is in everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mushrooms have umami in it. And that's why I'm like, why do we need MSG when we could just use mushrooms? In my opinion, mm. I'm not super anti MSG, but I kind of am. Yeah. You know, it's an right. excitotoxin. I have kids. Mm. I was, you know, I yeah. just, you know, if mm. it's, why, why, why not avoid things that are toxic to our system Absolutely. if we can? Right. And so umami is this really mm, delightful flavor. Mm. And so we are working with porcini mushrooms mm-hmm. and we're working with shiitake. Both of those, they're different, but they have a really strong umami, a very strong, almost meaty flavor. Mm. And, uh, and that adds a really nice, I don't mm. know, mm, to, to the spice. Um, I, I have some family members that are just, I don't like mushrooms. Mm-hmm. But they like the umami spices oh, because good. it's like you, they taste it and oh, that's Cajun. Mm, it tastes good. It tastes like Cajun. Yeah, half of it's <laughs> half of it's mushroom, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and the thing about shiitake is it's highly medicinal. It has mm-hmm. been used for thousands of years in Ayurvedic medicine. Um, there's all I, I'm 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 researching shiitake more and more and mm-hmm. some of the enzymes that are produced, especially during fermentation process, mm-hmm. used for things like HPV and some of these. Um, viruses and diseases and things that like, mm, they, they, you know, it's, it's not curable, but mm-hmm. it seems like some of these studies are showing that you can completely eradicate mm-hmm. HPV, for example, mm-hmm. using shiitake. And I'm like, what? You know, That's like, another way to... <laughs> why aren't people talking about this more? You right, know? definitely. And so, you know, adding that to your food is going to be delicious. It's going to be really beneficial to your health. Yeah. Same with the porcini. Really, really high in potassium and all sorts of things. So, mm-hmm. you know, why not? Why Absolutely. Not? That's just another reason that, you know, mushrooms are saving the planet right there. Uh... You know what I mean? It's like, if we can help somebody with their illness, if we can help somebody overcome something they're going through, it's like, wow, it's great. So... It's the kind of information, you know, we got to get out to people. Totally, that, you know, totally. Just to even put that on the radar, like, hey, the, you know, there's some mushrooms that can treat certain diseases, certain viruses. And then once that's there, it's like, oh, wow, you know, somebody might be looking for something just to help them with whatever they're going through. So, Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. And I want to mention that there's a term, saving the planet, that's like a keyword, that's a trigger word. Yeah. Okay? I have been attacked. I have been, I've had people get really angry. I've had people yeah. approach me in person. How dare you say that? <laughs> you know how to save the planet. And I'm like, mm. whoa, 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 whoa. It's a question. Can mushrooms save the planet? Mm. And 
what does that even mean? So yeah. I don't believe that the planet needs saving. Yeah. I believe the planet is okay. Mm-hmm. You know, we can destroy as much as we want. The, the fact is that we are going extinct right now. Uh, we're like in the sixth mass extinction right now. Mm. We're killing off so many animals. So many species mm. are disappearing. So many plants are disappearing. We're turning our planet into a giant desert right now. It's called desertification. Look mm-hmm. it up. It's a mm-hmm. huge. Ep- it's a huge epidemic that a lot of people in the United States, for some reason, are not talking about. Mm-hmm. It has to do with global warming and all mm-hmm. of that. It all ties together. We can either, as far as I can, I'm concerned, we can either work with fungi mm-hmm. to um, kind of reverse some of the damages that we've done. See, mm-hmm. humans are the ones causing it. This mm-hmm. this go around. Yeah. So we can either work with these creatures because I, I believe they're creatures. Yeah. Or we can um, just continue on our path and eventually there'll be no more humans and, and, and fungi and bacteria will come along and clean up after us mm-hmm. and, you know, and who right. knows what the next uh, beings will be that, that are the main, mm-hmm. the main, you know, it used to be dinosaurs and, you know, now it's humans and who, who's the top guy, you know, right. but, um, but no, it, it would be, it would be beneficial to us. And I, you know, this is where it gets, sounds a little crazy to some people, but I am. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that the fungi are highly intelligent, and um, and, and and I say fungi because there's so many kinds, and we're talking yeah. about not just the ones that have a mushroom is not what I'm talking about. Mushroom is just the fruiting body that you right. see on top of the soil. Yeah. Underneath the soil, you got all the mycorrhizal systems, and mm-hmm. some fungi don't even have fruiting bodies. They just um, live in the soil it's in conjunction with the plants, yeah. uh, and they attach to the root systems of the mm-hmm. plants and give the nutrients to the right. plants in exchange for sugars. Mm-hmm. But um, they, we, I believe they are reaching Whole out to some world. of us yeah. as like spirit, you know, from yeah. from a spiritual like when we talk about spirituality from a spiritual perspective, mm-hmm. I feel really connected to the mm-hmm. spirit of the fungi, if you will. Yeah, right. And that's where some people are like, "Are you crazy?" Well, maybe we're all a little crazy, but. Right. But no, yeah. definitely. There's a lot to relate to it. Um, you know, I think, you know, in terms of like the human spirit, like it, it feels like we're a fractal. We're one. We're outside of everybody else. It's just me. And like everybody's, you know, that's like the separation. But the truth is there's a mycelial network that like runs through, I feel like all of humanity. And that's the connection we can't see with the naked human eye. But we all carry kind of like an interconnectedness, I think. And that the mushroom kind of shows you that. Even the aspens out here in Colorado show you. Just on the surface, if you look with your natural eye, you're just going to see a whole bunch of trees on the surface. But if you look a little deeper, those roots are all connected and they're all part of the same family. And so, Absolutely. and so I feel like there's a lot of wisdom just by looking at the plant kingdom, looking at the fungal kingdom. And there's, there's a lot to learn from that. Because, you know, as we, we feel this, you know, we may feel like isolation or we may feel disconnected from nature or something like that. But the truth is, if we can just realize that we are all connected through us through the spirit and like using the fungi kind of as a model like we have all these you know who knows mycelial sheaths are just like invisible right and we're just connected through this and you think of a friend and then they call you or whatever it is it's like the way our minds work the way our thoughts work it seems to be very interconnected in a lot of ways you know you know that old adage uh, as above Mm -hmm. so below Mm -hmm. and we look at what's going on beneath us Mm -hmm. and the um, in the microcosm Mm -hmm. of things and Mm -hmm. then we look at the macrocosm and there i mean Mycelium and nebulas look very similar. (laughs) (laughs) And and it's interesting, you know. I mean, the patterns persist Mm -hmm. going smaller Mm -hmm. and getting bigger. So we all we have is what's in front of us to Mm -hmm. learn from. And, um, yeah, there's this this term for the, they call it the wood wide web. It's like the original internet, right? (laughs) It's how all the plants, the plants connect. They uh, they actually uh, interact with each other on the soil using the fungi, or using the mycorrhizal networks. Mm -hmm. And they've looked at the mycelium. I don't know what kind of camera they're using, but you can see the electrical pulses, and it looks like our nervous system. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, wow, yeah. you know, that is, I, I think that that is the nervous system of our planet, so wow. to speak. I really do. And so when we ingest these mushrooms or we, you know, allow and receive them to come into our body and then so our stomach acid digests them. And but there seems to also be some kind of intelligence with it that when you eat it, it's almost like your awareness, your cognition tends to shift. I've noticed once one with the lion's mane, second with the chaga, mm-hmm, that chaga, chaga mm-hmm. tea. You know, powerful. but it's super powerful and it feels like it's very awakening. I feel like it, it kind of just quickens you or something. Mm-hmm. There's something about it that's like, 
not the same as having you know ginger tea, which ginger is great too. I mean, they're, sure. all, they're all great, but uh-huh. there's something about the mushroom tea that I feel has like really you know affected my like ability just to wake up or just to you know be creative or think outside the box or something. I mean, there's th- there's a huge connection to, to you know to that. I could go in so yeah. many directions with yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> Yes, not only when you're feeding yourself the proper nutrients, your body's going to be performing Mm -hmm. better. So that's Mm -hmm. logic. But but some of these mushrooms, like you mentioned, chaga, also (laughs) works with our pineal gland, and and it helps to balance the circadian rhythm. So it's really really good for like, you know, helping with sleep patterns. It helps Mm. with you know what happens in our pineal gland. We've got it's okay. So chaga is like the high has the highest concentration of melanin than anything on the planet Mm. melanin is what causes our coloration in our skin our eyes our hair and the neuromelanin in our brain Mm. okay and i've been on this kick about the neuromelanin because there's not a ton of research on it Mm. um but chaga helps with the production of melanin in the brain but it also when your body when you intake it your body converts the melanin into melatonin. Melatonin is the, right. you know, what I'm talking about yeah. with the balancing of moods and mm-hmm. sleep patterns and things like that. Now, they've done studies on chaga and its melanin and it, how it affects our skin. Mm-hmm. And people who have uh, diseases with this, blo- what is it called, with the blotchiness of the skin? Uh, like eczema or... It's not eczema. It's not like a, a rash. It's like... The, 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 or... It's like color, not psoriasis, psoriasis but, not... but it's like a coloration, yeah. coloration okay. splotches. Oh in your and so uh, yeah. in taking the chaga as well as putting it on your skin has mm. al- helped with balancing those colorations mm. now what hasn't been studied is how it affects the neuromelanin in our brain and mm. the neuromelanin is found in the midbrain mm. and they have found that people with with uh, parkinson's disease, disease mm-hmm. are almost devoid of neuromelanin neuromelanin it's very wow. dark there's and, they, and uh, supposedly we don't understand what what even what why why does our body even have neuromelanin Mm. why is it that people with parkinson's have none Mm. but yet people who are really healthy have a lot of it Mm. and i'm like okay take chaga when people ask me you know oh my mom has parkinson's what 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 should she take Mm. i say take chaga Chaga. but there aren't i mean more research needs to be done i'm looking at the facts i'm looking at like the studies and then i'm like using intuition to, to, to say that but I, yeah, I had a really profound experience on chaga. I don't know, like other people, I think also have profound experiences on it, but and it's probably different depending on your personality and who you are sure, and what sure. you're about. But when I drank this chaga tea, I turned into like a stand-up comedian. Everything was funny. <laughs> I mean, I, my timing was impeccable. Like I probably just seen to drink it every day. Like I'm not even like it was like one of the funniest nights. Everybody was on the floor laughing, and I didn't even at a certain point I'm like, this isn't even me. Like this is the chaga's intelligence and like <laughs> connecting dots and like making things funny. And so, so anyways, great. I was like, wow. So, yeah, I had a really positive experience. That's that. awesome. Or maybe I, it just amplifies something that's within you, too, or whatever that might be. Well, you know? yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it's helping your brain to function yeah. better, you know. I mean, and, and our pineal gland yeah. is also referred to as the thir- our third eye. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so some people claim, and I say, I say claim because this is not scientifically mm-hmm. backed up, is that it helps to de- decalcify uh. your pineal gland. Um, and mm-hmm. which would help with your psychic abilities or your intuition, mm-hmm. your ability to connect and be sensitive in that way. Ah, nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've been accused of the chaga taking over my brain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That's fine. That's, that's fine. You know, oh, worse things or worse right. things out there. Right. <laughs> For sure. And that, you know, it kind of does, it, life gets very permeable or like kind of like the, that veil gets really thin, I feel like, when you're really in tune anyways, and maybe some of these mushrooms just help us to tap into these latent abilities that we have to maybe kind of see or feel what somebody else is thinking or, you know, kind of get the gist of, like, sometimes I'll just hear words for people, and they're like, oh, oh my God, I was thinking, that? yeah, like, I was literally thinking that question in my that's, mind. That's so, killer. So we all have that, but sometimes it gets repressed, I think, and, and so, you know, feeding our body the nutrition and everything that it needs, you know, so that those good qualities of like our humanity can kind of come to the surface so we can help people is it's a great thing i think so, absolutely yeah. absolutely and I, i've had people come to me and say what can i take for dreaming i'm like yeah. having trouble sleeping i'm having trouble i never remember my dreams mm-hmm. chaga is super important but mm-hmm. i also um i'm a believer in the amanita muscaria mushroom uh, mm-hmm. mushroom medicine and this is a kind of a taboo topic because it's a psychoactive mushroom and it only grows in the wild you can't cultivate it in the lab um <laughs> 
and people, you know, I mean, it is a legal mushroom. It's legal, um, but but it is also a, to- a highly toxic mushroom. So if you're not preparing it properly, you're going to get very sick. And um, but it has a very direct correlation with the pineal gland as well. It's a you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah, definitely. It's, and uh, it's, it's I mean, so, and, uh, some people have used it to help them with sleep, or yeah. even because it. Um, the thing about Amanita muscaria is it's, it's hot. Those it's Italians, a, right? Yeah, those Italians. The, the here muscaria. we go. <laughs> you're going to go in that green pipe and you're just, you know, you're going to go find a whole other reality down there, you know. I think they were inspired by that, too. Oh, yeah. yeah they are probably sure. on it. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> going down the pipes, yeah, you know. Exactly. What are they finding down there? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but muscamol. Yeah. Muscamol yeah. is the component or mm. the psychoactive constituent in mm. the Amanita muscaria. Oh. I am just looking. We got a set. We, it's okay. Where's our set guy? We got <laughs> a set guy. I'm just going to get cozy with that. No. Yeah, you go for it. But, um, but, um, yeah. but muscamol has been studied yeah. for its effects mm-hmm. on people with... Um, mm-hmm that have seizures and whatnot, okay? Mm-hmm. So um, so muscimol uh, binds to the GABA receptors in mm-hmm. our brain. And um, when, our, when our brain is letting off these electrical pulses, if everything's smooth, well, you're, you're fine. But if there's like some discrepancies in the electrical pulses, what happens is you can have a seizure. So epileptic seizures is oh. what it's been studied. Mm-hmm. And so what it, yeah, so it's calming your nervous system. Okay. And, um, yeah, I I, um, I have see I uh I actually make Amanita muscaria mm-hmm. medicines mm-hmm. and um, I have repeat customers and some of the feedback that I have gotten is really like it's profound. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And wow. uh, what what you know I mean I, wow. uh, people mm-hmm. share you know like oh I need more of that. Some people even use it topically. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it it is all about the nervous system. Yeah, my sister had like a a cyst on her hand and put some sa- I make a salve out of it mm-hmm. and I use this. Uh, procedure. I, it's kind of complicated. I'm not going to go into how I, I do it, but I, I don't mind sharing it, but it's, yeah. it's a little bit <clears throat> drawn out. Mm-hmm. But anyway, she puts it on her cyst, and within a matter of what, days, it was mm-hmm. gone? Yep. Gone. She used it two times. It was oh. gone, and she's like had the, this big lump on her hand for a while. Mm-hmm. Little things like that. Um, anxiety. This one woman was like, anytime I feel a little anxious, I just take a little dropper full, and it's because I make yeah. the tinctures as well. Right. And I'm mm-hmm. like, you know, that's really good feedback. I like, And yeah. this one woman, she has arthritis. Mm-hmm. Traditionally, I believe in Russia, they, they use uh, Amanita muscaria topically for arthritis and also mm-hmm. for eczema and different, like, irritations of the skin because mm-hmm. it's really good for your skin. Mm-hmm. But um, she, bu- she, was bu- she bought it. She's like, oh, my God, it's the only thing that soothes my pain, my arthritis, wow. my pain. So mm-hmm. she started buying it for all her friends and having me sh- ship out bottles to all her friends all over the world. And I was wow. like, that's really great. You wow. know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm like, they, I'm all, you know, that makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. But it's good to hear this feedback because there really isn't a ton of study mm-hmm. on that. Definitely. And there needs to be. Absolutely. There really needs to be. And just like journaling these studies. I mean, this is like a pioneer. Like it's like you're, you landed on an island and <laughs> nobody knows anything on that island, right? Like they don't know what the plants are. They don't know what's edible. It's like, holy crap. So in a way, like when you pioneer, you do something new, like, you know, figure out like what the mushroom can treat. It's like, wow, like you really have to get that feedback when people try it for different things. And like with the system and, and, all, and all that, it's like, wow, we never knew that it could do this until, you know, we tested it or, or tried it. So that's really cool. Really awesome. It is you're, super you're exciting to me. That. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these things come to me in dreams. It's interesting. Wow, interesting. I'll wake up mm. in the middle of the night, like three in the morning, and suddenly be like, oh, and then I'm like researching. And then I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's weird how these things happen, mm-hmm. but it's like it comes to me usually mm-hmm. in the dream, dream mm-hmm. state, dream space. Cool. Awesome. Maybe we're in a dream right now. We it's are. Pretty dreamy, right? <laughs> Isn't that, is, it, is it the Buddhists that say that, or mm-hmm. we are? And what is it? Oh, I, I'm gonna misquote it, but it's like we're in we're in somebody's dream, right, you know? Right. We're a hologram, you <laughs> know? Uh-huh. We're all of the above. We're tangible exactly. and mm-hmm. intangible. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. Well, that's just one little facet and fractal of your life. I mean, there's so much more and I've seen you perform live and and do so many great things. So you're definitely like putting yourself out there and just really just going after, you know, your heart's desires and passions and super encouraging. And um, so where can people find you on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that? Instagram, Facebook. I've got several Instagram pages um, (laughs) that I run for different things. You know, the Colorado Mm -hmm. Mushroom Company, Mm -hmm. Can Mushrooms Save the Planet? Mm -hmm. Um, 
Rain Grant, that's my personal mm-hmm. page. Um, mm-hmm. I, I have some other businesses that we haven't discussed, like my I Felt Vaginas ornament business. <laughs> I make ornaments. Yeah, felt or, yeah, felt vaginas. Yeah, look it up. I Felt Vaginas. It's mm-hmm. out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's one of, you, got, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, sometimes you got to like have multiple businesses. Why Absolutely. Not? But, um, yep. mm-hmm. um, the uh, Psychedelic Club of Durango. And then mm-hmm. I do have my... Um, I, my DJ name is Rain Drip, R-A-Y-N-E. Oh, nice. I like Drip, that. you know. Yep. But, uh, but I have that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been performing since I was like 18 years old. Great. Awesome. Uh, I, I lived in Austin for uh, about a decade where I was wow. touring around. And so stuff. you're like swimming in the music and all that. Music yeah. is music's yeah. my first passion. Singing, yeah. singing mm-hmm. communing with the, you know. With Great. the musical realms and dancing and things like that. Awesome. But uh, but but being a healer, I've always been interested in herbalism. So mm-hmm. the mycology kind of, I just, it fits. Mm-hmm. It fits really well together. For and sure. So it, That's and, great. And, and, and there's this really interesting tight-knit community of myco-knots, so to speak. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it, it, it's <laughs> yeah. fun when you go it's to true. these mushroom festivals yeah. and things. You see the same people yeah. over and over again, and it yeah. starts to feel like family. Mm-hmm. It really does. Yeah. And it's such an eclectic blend of different types of people with different mm-hmm. backgrounds, all interested in mushrooms. And that's yeah. what brings us together. And that's super cool. That's awesome. I love that. That's super great. Awesome. Yeah, my brother just wrote a, he wrote a 550-page book about uh, Eden and entheogens. So it's oh, it's the beginning really? of the Bible, and like the journey of the Israelites, mm-hmm. and all the times mushrooms are mentioned or, uh-huh, uh-huh. or any are brought up, and he just referenced all of it. So oh, he's got like a really cool, cool scholarly kind of just approach to That's mushrooms in the Bible and uh-huh. how all these different people use them. And I'd be super interested to read yeah, his perspective yeah. on that. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been um, talking to these ethnomycologists, people that study um, you know the history and usages mm-hmm. of mushrooms within certain areas and I have several books so now I'm starting to dive into the history and the usages Mm -hmm. of mushrooms in different areas of the planet because Mm -hmm. I mean what what's the connected what's what are the similarities what are the differences Mm -hmm. and and uh it's super interesting to me so I'd be totally I don't know if you'd be yeah definitely yeah yeah, absolutely absolutely it's on archive.org Eden and Entheogens so Eden Eden and Entheogens yeah yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. so um yeah so that's that and uh yeah, this has been a lovely talk, and we could just probably go on for infinity and eternity. And yeah. That's just the nature <laughs> of, of these kind of talks, you know. I just really appreciate you coming and stopping by and just having a chat. And so I learned cool. I learned so much today about mushrooms and all Yay. the different ways that they're saving the planet. So I really appreciate <laughs> it, and um, definitely look forward to seeing you on again when we do more episodes. And Killer. Yeah. Killer. So, Maybe awesome. next time I'll bring some actual mushrooms to showcase or something. Absolutely. You know? Have that some could props. be fun. Yeah. Maybe even cook some. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> All great. about eating yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Killer. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much for yeah. having me yeah. on. Thank this you, is inspiring yeah. me to yeah. move forward on things. Awesome. It's just always Super good great. to commune with people. It really is. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you guys for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next episode of All Dimensional Talks. Peace.